Billy Pilgrim says that the universe does not look like a lot of bright little dots to the creatures of Trafalgar. The creatures can see where each star has been and where it is going, so that the heavens are filled with rare filled luminous spaghetti, and the Trafalgarians don't see human beings as two-legged creatures either. They see them as great millipedes, with baby legs at one end and old people legs at the other, says Billy Pilgrim. Billy asked for something to read on the trip to Trafalgaria. His captors had five million earthling books on microfilm, but no way to project them in Billy's cabin. They had only one actual book in English, which would be placed in a Trafalgarian museum. It was Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Susan. Billy read it, thought it was pretty good in spots. The people in it certainly had their ups and downs, ups and downs. But Billy didn't want to read about the same ups and downs over and over again. He asked if there wasn't, please, some other reading matter around. Only Trophimadorian novels, which I'm afraid you couldn't begin to understand, said the speaker on the wall. Let me look at one anyway. So they sent him in several. They were little things. A dozen of them might have had the bulk of Valley of the Dolls, with all its ups and downs, ups and downs. Billy couldn't read the Trophimadorian novels, of course, but he could at least see how the books were laid out, in brief clumps of symbols separated by stars. Billy commented that the clumps might be telegrams. Exactly, said the voice. They are telegrams? They are no telegrams on Trophimador, but you are right. Each clump of symbols is a brief, urgent message describing a situation, a scene. We Trophimadorians read them all at once, not one after the other. There isn't any particular relationship between all messages, except that the author has chosen them carefully, so that when seen all at once, they produce an image of life that is beautiful and surprising and deep. There is no beginning, no middle, no end, no suspense, no moral, no causes, no effects. What we love in our books are the depths of many marvelous moments seen all at one time. Moments after that, the saucer entered a time warp, and Billy was flung back into his childhood. He was 12 years old, quaking as he stood with his mother and father on Bright Angel Point, at the rim of the Grand Canyon. The little human family was staring at the floor of the canyon, one mile straight down. Well, said Billy's father, manfully kicking a pebble into space, there it is. They had come to this famous place by automobile. They had seven blowouts on the way. It was worth the trip, said Billy's mother raptly. Oh God, was it ever worth it. Billy hated the canyon. He was sure he was going to fall in. His mother touched him, and he wet his pants.